Thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, so I think um, during the SARS-CoV-2 pandemics, we really, really learned how much can be gained from uh, uh, genomic surveillance for data-driven decision-making. Um, so ideally, we would want to um, identify all our efforts to also boost this uh, for bacteria. And that's not just important for the identification of, no, of new or known pathogens, as other speakers in this symposium will be talking about, this also concerns the surveillance of variants. So if you think about vaccine escape uh, variants um, or the rise of antimicrobial resistance where you want to track um, AMR markers. But of course, um, this is also important if we want to compare different isolates in a high resolution fashion so that we can analyze outbreaks, transmission change, chains, or trace source of an infection so we shoot it down in case of foodborne pathogens. And that's not just a topic for human health, but also connected to veterinary medicine and environmental monitoring. So usually um, we want to do whole genome sequencing because we get very high resolution and we also get lots of uh, information about viral factors, AMR markers, etc. So once you isolate the DNA, you do NGS. Uh, you can do this for hundreds of isolates in parallel. And because this generates lots of data, you use bioinformatic to reconstruct it and get the information. And in this regards, you want to do this very standardized so we can communicate to each other and also exchange the data. And within this three studies um, that I want to show you is we were wondering can we replace these um, short read um, machines by nanopore sequences not only because they are cheap and small but also because they come with the advantage that we have these long reads we have the continuous uh, closed assemblies um, and there was lots of excitement in the plasmid session today so this really leads to um, new insights whether markers on the chromosome or on the plasmids. And additionally, um, uh, this is a real-time method, so the, uh, the results might be available very fast. So that's ideal if we want to do it very close to the patient so that we can keep track of outbreaks, um, etc. So for our readout in these studies, we're using basically core genome MLSD, which is an extension to classically multilocus sequence typing. So instead of just sequencing five to seven housekeeping genes, you extend this to the core genome genes of a certain species, but that extend it to thousands of loci and you increase the high resolution or the discriminatory power. By that, um, this comes still with the benefits from the classical MLSD. So you have public databases, exchange, uh, et cetera. So in our first study, we wanted to benchmark nanopore sequencing. And I think um, that's what a lot of um, studies have been doing and the reports um, were pretty promising. So we had a short read data of um, Batasis in this case. Um, it's a minimum spanning tree, it's not that important. So what I want to show you here is, so compared to the short read uh, tree, you have a long read tree here, long read only, no polishing uh, with short reads. And you could identify the same clusters as indicated by these shadings here. Um, we had uh, almost the same um, genetic distances between these isolates. So we have the isolates in circles, the number on the line is a mark for the genetic distance. They were almost all time uh, the same. There were a few differences actually, but by comparing this to the hybrid uh, assemblies, uh, we saw that these are actually additional targets. So short read assemblies were pretty fragmented. You can see the number down here. On average, 350 contigs against more or less a single one for the long reads. So these were just targets that were not assembled and could not be used um, for typing. And the same is true if we want to analyze the vaccine profile. So we do have a few isolates here which are white. There we could not extract certain targets. Again, too fragmented. And this can be much easier done with the long read. So that was pretty good. And we were really excited. But then the reports were coming up that this is not always the case, right? So this is related to DNA modifications. And we were also running a multi-center study um, where we analyzed different species. And I just want to quickly show you the results here. So for Listeria, um, the short read data in this tree is in green, and then the long reads are in gray. They are also in the tree. And when you look at these trees, what you realize is that most of the time this works pretty well. So most of the isolates, short reads, and long reads match pretty well. But there are certain isolates where this is not the case. So the long read data doesn't match with the short reads, uh, and it doesn't also match with each other. Um, we could trace that back to DNA um, modifications. And I think that also explains why some people, even within the same species, were reporting very good results. So if they had 
a good isolate set, I would say, while others might say this is not working for certain species. So, however, um, so coming from this challenge, there are obviously also solutions. And when you take a look at the sequencing workflow, which is very much the same um, as for short read sequencing, with that with the DNA prep, library prep, um, you are you attach the barcodes. Um, if you do multiplexing, then you do the sequencing with live base calling ideally assembly, polishing, and typing. The first thing that you can do is you can do a PCA-based library prep. So that you get rid of the, the modifications, and we did that, and this works to quite some an extent. It comes with a few other drawbacks. More interestingly, I would say you can also um, do the, or improve the bioinformatics. So you may more or less use the same old raw data and just improve the results. And uh, one option you have is going for base calling. There's a lot of machine learning involved in nanopore sequencing, so you can improve the base calling models, but there is also um, post assembly polishing, basically, where you map back the reads to the assembly and then uh, you have some machine learning involved um, to correct for nanopore specific errors. And that's exactly what was happening. So there was a new um, base calling model released by nanopore, also a bacterial methylation um, model for its Medaka polisher. But also the company um, who is developing Six Sphere that we use for the readout were. Um, um, programming a proprietary CGMST polisher really dedicated to this task uh, in our readout. So for this uh, study they, uh, in Münster, there were 80 multi-truck resistant organisms or isolates um, chosen. 11 species, all escape organisms were included. Long read data was generated, the old and the new base calling model, fly assembly, old polishing, the new bacterial methylation model, and CGMST polisher readout by CGMST. This was compared uh, to short reads, um, and the ground rules were basically a hybrid assembly, so long read plus short reads assembled by Hyperacta. And that's the result. It's a pretty huge table, so let me guide you through it. So we have the ground truth on top, the Illumina data. So you see even for Illumina out of these 80 samples, we had a single one where we have a mismatch. So that's what's also happening with short reads. However, with the old base color, and if you just do fly assembly, without any polishing, we had 37 samples affected and the maximum distance from one sample to its ground truth was 98. And that's pretty high because, for example, the, the thresholds that we use for cluster analysis are somewhere between 10 and 20. So that's huge. And also the average distance was pretty high. This uh, got a bit better by polishing. And the really big improvement came from this bacterial methylation polishing, basically, which reduced the number of affected samples, but also the distance still too high. However, if you apply the CGMLST polisher on top of these three options, you end up with five samples with a distance of three, which is fine. And then you additionally have this new version 5 base calling model shown down here in blue. So uh, again, all these different options and what you see is in the end, you end up with two samples affected by just a single uh, uh, error in the maximal distance. So that's pretty good. The polisher um, looks for, I would say, ambiguous positions or tricky positions. So this comes at a cost if you look at the missing target. So it masks these positions by an end. So we do lose a bit of, of targets, a bit more additional. Uh, missing targets. What's really nice is if you look at whether a certain AMR marker is placed on the short reads or uh, on the chromosome, sorry, or on the plasmid um, for these high priority targets denoted down here in these 80 samples compared to short reads, you have almost 99% placed correctly. Um, no incorrectly placed on the chromosome, um, a few ones incorrectly on the plasmid. That's lower for the short read. Again, you get these um, very nice assemblies. They are continuous and uh, circular most of the time. We didn't have any missing targets, a few additional ones. So that's what's happening very often with long reads that you have over circular uh, contigs for the plasmids. If you boil it down to the number of affected samples, 6% for the long reads against 20% for the short read. So that was pretty good. And finally, um, we wanted to see also for the reproducibility, because it's nice if it can be done, but if we want to interact or in exchange the data, this should be able, should, we should be able to do it anywhere. So the uh, DNA preps of 16 isolates were sent out to six different laboratories containing four species, um, and this includes bad strains as well as good ones. Um, the old base calling model 
um, fly assembly, and in this case, only the two best partitioning options. Again, CGMLST readout, and compared to long read, short read, hybrid assemblies using Hyperacta as a ground truth. Um, and the table looks very much the same as uh, before. So the number of affected samples with the old base calling was four to six uh, across the different labs. The maximal distance was pretty high, same for the average distance. If you apply the CGMST polisher, this is getting much, much better. So this maximal distance, which is, I would think is the main readout, so that's um, something we should care about, drops, but that's still too high for high resolution comparison. However, if you then switch to this new version 5 base calling model, all these numbers drop dramatically. So I will just switch back to this old base calling, new base calling, and you, you really see this huge effect of the version 5 base calling model and the bacterial methylation model on its own. So only two to five samples that were affected and the maximal distance was five, four in this case. Again, applying CGMLST polisher on top um, to um, maximum uh, distance of two of a sample to its ground truth. So that's pretty good. And what you also see here is that if you have pretty good um, data already, um, as on top here, if you apply the CGMLST polisher, so the number of missing targets does not rise up that dramatically anymore. So that's really good um, for high resolution typing. So coming to my conclusion, um, as for the error rate, there was really a huge boost in the um, reliability, I would say, of the data with this sub-5, this um, superior model version 5 base calling um, that only has minimal errors. This is especially true if you apply this uh, post-assembly polishing using Metaka 2X and its bacterial methylation model. And um, the CGMLST polish is highly effective, especially for um, the older base calling model. And why we did that is that um, the new model um, was quite compute intensive, so it would have been interesting if you could basically use the old data. But now Nanopore um, released a new uh, Dorado version, which boosted the speed um, quite a bit. So I think nowadays you would want to go for this version 5 base calling. For reproducibility, um, again, version 5 base calling, bacterial methylation model, and the CGMLSD polisher, as on the last slide, um, need nearly perfect data. You might wonder, should we include the CGMLSD polisher at all? Because, I mean, uh, the data look pretty good. I would think yes, because um, I think it looks for positions um, that might still be difficult, or um, put it a bit differently, um, uh, positions where Dorado and Medaka models are, might not have been trained for. So you might be a bit more on the safe side against these methylation errors by masking them um, than to include those. Um, yeah, exactly. And then um, we also saw that um, it's a bit tricky for um, the coverage uniformity across different samples, but genome size compensation works. So coming to my conclusion, with the latest OND tools and models um, in combination with the CGMLST polisher in our studies and uh, involved um, species, we got very reliable and reproducible results and they were in the range that we can use them for the genomic surveillance of bacterial pathogens. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention and of course all the involved scientists and uh, universities that contributed um, to these uh, multi-center studies. Thanks.